Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining this fabulous class. Can you wave if you can hear us? Hi, lots of you there. Hello, everybody. I um, just wanted to apologise. I know you were expecting Hannah, but um, as you know, Hannah's um, a busy mum with two... Uh, sorry, Mel. Um, Hannah, busy mum with two young boys, but Mel is actually on her way to Peterborough at the moment. So the whole team are all over the place. So I'm afraid you're stuck with me. However, we are recording this, so you can watch it back as many times as you'd like. And of course, we'll try and get into as much detail as possible. So I'm going to start right at the very beginning. For those of you that have never done anything like this before, and for, uh, forgive me anybody who is really familiar with what I'm about to show you, but hopefully there'll be some inspiration for everybody. So first of all, I just want to talk about the reflections that we've got. Now, we do get lots of questions about how to actually print these out. Please make sure that you print them actual size. You don't ask your printer to say fit to paper. If you do, it isn't gonna fit the reflections. If that happens and you can't make it work yourselves, then give us a quick call and we will help you do that. So first of all, I just want to talk to you about the way the dies fit over the top. Now. I know that some people use the tattered lace symbol as the first place that they line things up. But what can happen in the manufacturing process is that that get, gets placed in the best place for it not to cost any money. So you're not paying for that part of the metal. So <clears throat> please use the main body of the design to line it up. We want to make sure that we can't see any of the image when we're working with it. And that's designed to give us that special finish. The next one that I've got is this one here. And this is our outline die. Now, if I use this on the image die, it's going to give me a very fine white border all the way round, which is great if we're wanting to create shadow effects. But also, if I wanted to mat and layer this so that this was on the, the outline was the base and then my image die went on the top, I would get a lovely border around the outside edge. This one is also great for apertures. It's also for good for doing things over the edge of cards. So it's a really, really useful die. And finally, one of the last things that we're doing with this, and we're doing more of it over the coming months, is using it onto a piece of card, face down, so the blade is cutting into the paper. And then you take a piece of your foil from your foiling pen. So just like I've got here, and we place that down. This goes over the top and you trace just inside here. Then lift it up, pull the foil out. So hopefully it's still stayed stuck down. You'll be able to just see a foiled edge. And then that goes through your printer, um, through your cutting machine. So just to repeat that, you place the foil down onto a piece of plain card. You put the die over the top of it with the die blade down and then we use the foot, the tip of the foil pen to just trace inside here so it will leave a foiled impression underneath and you can then cut it out and you get a foiled border. And the lovely Amanda's going to be sharing lots more top tips on that but I know for Christmas it's a great one to actually try it out with. So let's get into this kit that's sitting on your desks waiting to be played with. So first of all, I'm just going to take a little look through these boards in a bit more detail with you. So I want to point out some of the things that we've done as we've gone along. So first of all, this is the parcel that we've got here. So you can see that complete parcel. And by cutting into these, you can get lots of different effects. So that's a complete one. It's been cut into to make a parcel up here and also use that bow. So it's making it look like a bigger bunch. So the first one has gone, that, well, we've got one there and then we've got one on top of it. So you've got those two and then the extra pieces are cut from here and placed there. But also I've actually cut out the bows as well. So giving it more dimension by just cutting out these bows so that they sit on top and give you that extra bit of detail. So that's how we're going from this size 
to this size. The other thing that I wanted to share with you is that if you want to make this less Christmas, then we can come into it and just snip away the holly. So I'm just going to snip it away like that. Come into this part and snip away. And then this part. Now it makes it less Christmas, but you have still got the trees there. So what I would do is go into it once more, snip here and come round to this part of the design and there. And then you've got that one, which is no longer Christmas and you could use this one all year round. So that's a, a really useful little die to actually, if you want to do Christmas, um, you want to do just birthday presents or presents and gifts. So that's the first board. This one is our bells and again, layered up. Now here, I've actually got two layers of bells on this one and two layers there and, and just one layer just here. But the whole thing is lifted up on, um, on foam pads to get dimension. And again, this one has been designed so that we can make this an all day, every day bell. So you would snip here, round this part, up to that part of the, of the bow. Then you're gonna snip round the edge of the bow there, and that piece will pop out. Round the edge of the bow there, and that piece pops out. Then come up to this one, and you're gonna go there, right up into that little island that we've got come back down, round into the bit of the ribbon and down and round that bell. And then that makes that one all year round. So you've got another one that's just gonna work for all year rather than for Christmas. So that's a very useful one to have. And if you wanted to take the bows off, which we can do, just there and I take off the bells at the top, I can use these as little containers and I can put my flowers and my holly in them. So I've created a little vase, little vases from them. So that's another little thing that you can do. I go on to the next one, our winter wishes. Obviously, this one is just exquisite. It's a perfect example of why you need that outline die because on a glitter card, it just looks beautiful. Then we've got season's greetings, exactly the same, all of that detail on there. Then I'm moving into the church. And again, lots of shapes here for us to work with. Well, the obvious one to make any changes here would be to take the spire off, which is easy to do, but also you can extend this church. So let me just show you what I mean by that. And I'm just gonna take a couple of them and my white piece of card, and I'll show you how I would do that. So I put my first one down there, then this one gets cut there, and you go into the little turrets, you can extend it so that it looks like that. So it becomes a bigger part of the design. I'm going to take off the top. So I'm thinking about little girls, um, castle cards, princesses, all of that kind of thing. And then I'm going to take this piece and place it just there. So you've created a much, much bigger castle than we've got. So that's another one. I can also bring this one to the front and move that one up slightly just because of that bit of dimension that we've got there. So you can see like it looks like it's in the background. So again, you've got lots of ways of being able to extend that part of the design. <coughs> Excuse me one moment. So into the next one. Now, wow so much we can do with this collection. So we've got the little girl feeding Rudolph. We've got him, her handing up things. We've got her stroking kit. The children are walking towards them. 
We've got lots of detail and design going on here. I'm going to build you lots of compositions with that one. Of course, you've got the white cuts. These would be great if you wanted to do silhouette cards. Cut those in black. Then we've got the front of the walkway into the church and lots of detail we can get here. But this, again, isn't just Christmas, everybody. This one is, again, can be used all year round. And just to share with you on here what I would do with this. First of all, I would be coming into the design and I would take out this part of the um, of the wreath. Now, at that point, it still looks very Christmas. But if you get yourself a green pen, I think the one I've got is actually grey, not green. But let's do it and just you'll see. And what we can do is we'll make all this as if it's the roof. So I'm just going to put something underneath it so I don't spoil the board behind. So this becomes just the grey roof. And you then have got something that you can use for wedding. We can use, because it looks like you could colour it so that it looked like it had got reeds on it. But you can see how it immediately taken away that snowy feel. And so I'm what we will be doing is getting the artwork and the reflections changed for you so that you can then use it with these different roofs on them because it's going to be so useful for the rest of the year. And then where it's, it's um, white here, we would add in a little bit of greenery just so that it looks like it's moss that's growing up on these elements. But that has become all year round. So another one for us to be able to get more out of. Now our, our globe here, again, we've got a lovely snow globe. We've got that in multiple sizes. It's perfect for us to put designs behind it. And in fact, this is one of the cards that I'm going to do for you. So I'm gonna show you how to make this dimensional card. You can see the detail of that snow globe at the front. You've got lots of elements to be able to decorate with. And then we come on to the scenes. Now, these are typically um, fabulous ideas for how you could build your card from, because that is the card itself. So we've got the kind of detail that I want to share with you so you don't miss. Things like this, putting a little tiny bit of glitter, not all the way around the door, but top corner, top left, bottom right tiny bit on the top of the um, the wreath itself, decorating the children's little hats, little bits on their clothing, as if it's just been dusted with snow. On the top of the lanterns, the Christmas trees and those presents. And filling out the presents so that they come all the way around the bottom of the tree. And then putting the Christmas bow on, not so that it's right at the top of the tree, because it looks sort of a little bit floppy, but putting it here so it's just pulling the whole thing together and we're not losing the detail of the lanterns, which is important. The post box has been pushed a little bit further up to the top. And then these bits of foliage are actually hanging down rather than going upwards. So that's what to um, look for. And then this little famous dog. Now he's super famous because he got talked about a lot online because he looks like he's only got two paws. Well, that's because he's actually sitting up to hold hands. So that's how he was designed. Then we move on to this one. And this is really two cards in one. So we've got our stag and all of our Christmas trees. You'll notice the shape of the trees blends with the shape of the trees in the background. That's what that was all done very much on purpose. The foliage now is coming out from behind all these elements. And these are the pieces that are in the snow globe. The Christmas trees. So any pieces of the tree that hang over the edges, you would just trim those off. So pieces like that little piece you can see there. And then this bottom panel is wider and less dense than the one at the top. So to balance it, we want it heavy and small at the top, 
cloaking round the globe with the Christmas trees and then filling the width of the bottom just there. The next one for you is a really fabulous picture. So here it looks like our little girl is reaching up to the wreath. We've got the Christmas church in the background. We've got the snowman here and the birdhouse and the children together on the other side. And aesthetically, I would um, prefer to have my snowman this side looking into the picture, my children this side looking into the picture, and my winter wishes on the other side. The reason we chose not to do that was because of the background that was chosen for this. So if you start with a completely white sheet of paper and you just put an inky glow round the church, that would be what I would suggest you would do is swap those round. Okay, so just a little bit of an overview of some of the kinds of things that we can do here. But I'm going to go straight into this demonstration now and show you how that this card has been put together so that you get the idea of what we're actually about. So first of all, we've got quite a lot of pieces and mats and layers. So I'm just going to pull this to here so that you can see what I've got. So the first thing is you need to decide on the size of the card itself and you actually need to cut every piece the same. So you're going to need four pieces. So it's one, two, three, and my fourth one is there. And they must all be identical. So four pieces of card that are identical. The next thing is they need scoring in half so that you've got a good firm fold. OK, once you've done that, you can start to tape up if you choose to. But the next but the first thing that I would do before I did my taping up is do my mats and layers. So here is what we're going to be matting and layering. So first of all, I've got the panels that I've created eight of these and they're all identical. You can change them if you want to. You can have them so that one image flows into the other. So I could have this one on here so it flows across the design. It's really up to you how, how you build these up. But these, I've done them in pairs like this, okay? So I've got those in pairs. There's the second one. This is my, uh, sorry, my third one. This is my fourth one. So the first thing that I need to do is take off the tape that's here. Oops, let's get this behaving. Get that tape up and off. Now, I'm the kind of person, because I've been doing crafting such a long time, you wait and see, I'll probably do it wonky now. I actually just put everything on by eye. So I line up, I look at the, I know that this is going to fit with an equal border all the way around. So I line up, I look for what size border I've got there, what size border I've got there, check it's about level at the top and keep, try and get it as straight as possible and pop that down. But a little tip for you if you've not been used to doing this is you slide your pokey tool or whatever um, other implement you're using just get a pokey tool to do this with and you slide it under your tape and just start to lift that tape up so it it starts to come up so I'm just going to pick this up and get that going so I want to do it so this isn't this is edge to edge um, double-sided tape Whereas one of the things that I prefer to use is what we call finger lift. And that means that the very edge of the tape isn't stuck down and it's so, it makes it so easy to work with because you, you're not trying to catch it from the very edge of it. You've got, it's much more well behaved. So let me just get this tape up here. Everybody has their preferred choice, um, but I'm never gonna complain when somebody's helping me with my prep, so. Let's get that one, see if I can get that. There we go. 
Right, so I'm just going to pull out a little bit from each side like that. And now I'm going to do the same thing as I did earlier, just lining that up. But it means I can put it down, I can check that it's level before I have to press it down. And this part of it hasn't stuck. So I can check it. Then you pull out the tape from both sides and that's perfectly flat for you. Okay, so we've now got four of these pictures and I'm just gonna give you some measurements so that you know what size I'm actually working to. So I am working to a 20 inch square to start with. So they're both, all of them are 20 inches. All of the backgrounds that I'm working from are off um, the Highlight Crafts website. And the cardstock that I'm working with is our pro print. So we've got the best finish that we can get with it. Um, just had to think about that for a moment. So I'm just gonna put these four out of the way for a second. Oh, and by the way, let me just also give you that. Um, I have got my, so I've got a, I've, I've got about a two millimeter border on either side here. So that means that this one, the, the buff one is 9.6 and this one is 9.4. So two millimeters all the way round, just to give you an idea of the size. Right now for the actual part of the card that I'm going to do next, you're going to need to cut the main body of the, um, of the, globe out into in buff card you'll also need to cut cut two of them out in your card stock with your your reflections and I've cut two and I've stuck them together so this is quite sturdy then you cut the circle which which is the center of the globe you're going to need one of those and you're also going to need this piece of acetate with that cut out as well. And then stick one of the reflections over the top and one of them over the back so that this is sandwiched between the two. So the acetate is sandwiched there between the two pieces. If you're using anything lighter than about 200 GSM for this, you're going to need three to make it really strong because, and I would put one on the front and two on the inside. So I've used 240 because it's a little bit stronger. And then this is going to sit on there and that's gonna sit over the top. But before we do that, we're gonna build the scene inside. Now to go about doing that, this is my preferred method, is I'm going to take some wet glue and I've got a little bit of tape on the back of here, but I want to make sure that this tape doesn't want to behave very well. I want to make sure that the edges of this are stuck down because when we're putting all these elements together, particularly when you're making anything like shaker cards or anything with dimension, you want to get as much of it flat as possible because otherwise any of the embellishments or the glitter or sparkle you get, gets behind what you're working with and eventually it will make it come loose. It can get, it can um, go against the glue if you like. So let's just get that out. So that's great because that's gonna give me an instant stick, but I'm just taking this about two millimeters away from the edge, only a very small amount because I want to make sure that when I glue this down and I push the glue out, it doesn't go everywhere. So you're going to start off checking the edges, pulling it in just a couple of millimeter because we know that's where it fits. Like that, I'm just gonna line that up a little bit better because you can see it's not straight. So by not pressing down and using that wet glue, I've, helped, I've been able to give myself a bit more time to position it properly. So let's go to the top. Next time I teach, I promise I'll wear my glasses. That's a good thing to do. Now I'm good to go and I can push that glue with my finger 
out to the edge like that. And if you've got the right amount on, you won't see any wrinkling at all on the other side. But when I'm doing cards as gifts for people, then I always go back and make sure that that's well stuck. If I'm doing something for TV, I tend to use much stronger glue. Don't worry about the bits you can't see. Okay, so now we've got um, uh, the panel for our sentiment. So this is going to sit on here perfectly. And it's our winter wishes. I'm actually just going to pop this on We're using wet glue. And again, I'm making sure I don't over glue. So putting it all the way around. Do be conscious that this particular glue, which is from Pinflow, it's a book binding glue. It's got very little water in it. So it's great when you're putting stuff onto buff cards. Be cautious that you don't um, use it to stick two shiny surfaces together because it can come apart. And I'm also just going to share with you something that I do to make sure everything is level. So I'm just going to pull that down, get that all in place. So I'm just taking the tack off my fingers because I've got some little bits of it which are pushing out. It will dry clear. But I'm just going to slide that over the tiniest little bit. And then the other thing is this waste that I've got just going to put a tiny little bit of glue on there and anywhere where it isn't stuck you just slide that underneath there pull that out and stick it okay so there we go that's all and that's all good and stuck i've already got my foam pads on and i've actually gone with three thicknesses of pads there Okay, and there are two, uh, three mil pads, so that's quite going to be quite high up. You can see I've started to shape it a little bit while that glue is drying, just giving it a little bit of a curve. Right, inside the card now, I've got lots of elements to create my design. So I've got my trees that you can see here. I've got my snowman, which I can put here. Ah, oh, do you know what? Thank you, Jennifer. You're absolutely right. There's me telling you it's 20 centimetres, 20 inches. And in fact, it's not. It's 20 centimetres. That's a very big card. You're absolutely right. It's not that big. <laughs> Good job, isn't it? Right. So I now these have all been cut on 140 GSM paper because I want the depth for them to be able to, to be really flat. So this is where I am cutting and gluing, but I'm being very careful where the glue goes because there's a lot of individual cuts inside this tree and I don't want those to all end up all over my work. So I'm gonna start off, I put one tree down, press that in place. The next one, again, here. And remember, we've only got the thickness of our acetate and our project. So this has got to be nice and thin. I can choose whether I put my reindeer in here or my snowman. I'm going to put my snowman in on this one. So I'm going to go very gently along his, his arms. And then where I've got the glue, I'm just going to take off the excess before I glue it down. So all the time you're thinking about, have I got the right amount of glue? Is it in the right place? What else could I do that would make this better? So there. So he's going to go about there. And look at how beautifully flat that whole project is now. It's absolutely perfectly flat. So really happy with that. I'm going to put a little girl just here. So... Uh, yeah, we will have a little girl. So a little girl, whoops, just the glue again, just on her, right round the edges, on her mittens. And again, I'm just going to take off that little bit of excess and put her so she's finishing off the snowman. Her paw, you can see her boots lifted. So I'm just going to use my little paper trick to get that put down so 
Good, really happy with that. And I'm going to take the little dog and put him here as well. So he's actually part of the story. And let's just put a little bit of glue on him. And we'll take that down to his paws. And I'm just going to sit him up. But in fact, what I'm going to do is I'll make him standing and I'll show, him, show you how to get him so that he's got all his paws where they should be. So he was designed to be sitting up like this. But obviously, if we're going to have him as um, he's going to be standing or running, we need to have it so that he's got all of his paws. So what I want to do there is just trim him off his tummy. So we'll trim it off. We'll put we'll glue these in place first and then we'll put the body on. So we'll just glue those in place like that. And then the body is going to go like that. So I've lifted them up so they're a tiny bit shorter. I need to do my glue trick again. Just there. They're a tiny little bit shorter than the ones at the front because we want him to be um, looking in proportion. But that that's how you get him to get his four legs rather than his two legs. Okay, so I'm I'm happy with the way that this is looking. You could have a little border here, so it looks like we've got um, we've got some snow. If you want to do that, that's another option for you. But I'm quite happy with the result that I've got. Now, now you need to decide if you want to put any sparkle in or anything like that. And I have got um, a few. Where have you got my little glitter? Glitter, glitter pots. Can't see you. Just gonna see if they're right at the bottom. And if not, we'll just carry on without. Oh, there's a lot of glitter at the bottom. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna talk you through this then. Right, when you put this in, you put the glitter, so you make sure everything is really flat. Put the glitter into the um, thing, brush it in from all the edges, because that's really important. But then spread it out so that it's not in one big lump, because as this goes on, what will happen is you will end up with that glitter in a pile here and you'll be flicking it and trying to make it move. And it can be quite challenging. So we don't want to do anything with that. What we're now going to do is I'm going to run the glue around all of this here. So I'm just putting this onto here and then I'm going to leave this for a minute or two to go tacky. So just on there, the tiniest little bit around this edge. And it needs to be a continuous line to make sure that that glitter does not escape. So what I do, do it round there first, then come onto this project because you can see where the glue is much more easily. Put it on here too, like that. Then come down the edge, across the bottom. It's gonna go across. I'm just gonna, this will dry clear so we don't have to worry about it. And that then, it's gonna get that little bit from that acetate because this is what we don't want to happen, is that you get it on the acetate itself because it will mark it, make it look dirty. And then we take this and we lay one over the other. Once you've laid one over the other, you've got that in place, which you have now. You can press that down, maybe get a piece of kitchen paper to use as you're pressing it. And then don't touch it, pop that to one side. That's ready to go to one side for the next part of the project. Okay, so we're going to now join these up. Okay, so I'm going to start off how with joining these up. So I'm just checking which way they're going to go. So I go, I go with a straight one to a... Uh, I'm just choosing which, which order I want them in. 
So I think I want to alternate. So I'm going to swap and put them that way. So you're going to make a little star. So if, you, if I turn that round, you can see how that's all going together. Okay, so I'm now going to lay it down so I can see. And I've got my tape on here. Let's see if I can get this tape to even half behave. So it's, it's interesting because we're all so used to our own choice of glues and materials. And then you go to work with somebody else's and it just sometimes you just don't find it quite as easy. So I'm going to burnish it there and let's see if that will help me get it up. Yeah, it's helped a little. Okay, so I've got a code for you all. And if anybody would like to shop after this hour, um, the code is blue 40 and you're going to get 40 percent off a baby blue if anybody is wanting to buy one and that's on the highlight crafts website and we've just launched our new flower of the month right now i need to talk you through this what i'm doing i've got both pieces on the same surface totally flat i'm going to then use my finger to feel up this edge so there to make sure that they are sticking so that when I get to this corner, as I come down here, I can get that perfectly flat because what we don't want is a little wiggle in this and those wiggles are really hard to get rid of. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm gonna start off burnishing all along here. We'll just lift this off. So there. And I'm not going to do all of them because I don't think you want me to see me sitting doing this. But I'll just do one more so that you can see me line it up once more. And we'll go into here. So I'm going to pull the two pieces together and make sure they're both on a flat surface and that score line's good. You butt them up like this so you can see that they're level. Then bring the two sides together. Use your thumb here to fold it and hold it up, get to that top edge, and then you should be able to bring your thumb along that score line so that you get that so that it is level. And it should be perfectly straight, which is the effect that we want, okay? So we've got those, you can see how that's starting to come together. It's working really well. And that's this is gonna be the last one that would go on. I'm not going to put that last one on because we don't need to for the purpose of this. But what I am going to do is I'm just going to look for my piece of acetate. Okay. Wow, that code takes that baby blue down to $29.99. Well done, everybody. That's really good. And that is just for you guys. Right, now I don't want to hold you up because I've got another one I want to share with you. So I'm going to just borrow this piece of acetate. I don't know where it is. I'm sure it's here somewhere. It's invisible, isn't it? My, my lovely producer, Andrew, is saying he doesn't like it. Well, that's just because we can't ever see it. It's not in that bag. I should stick it on something, shouldn't I? I think I've learned a lesson. Never mind, this will save us some time. So I'm just going to borrow this one. Right. So, thank you, card. I'll pop that there so you can't see what I did. Right. What you need to do here is you get a piece of acetate, and that piece wants to be in centimeters, nine centimeters wide, and. Just slide this under here and 12 centimetres long. So nine by 12. And the shape that we're going to use, so we're going to pretend this is a nine by 12. I'm going to show you how this works. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is fold it in half like that, okay? Then you fold it in third, let me just make sure I'm just telling you this correctly. Yeah, then you fold it in thirds. So you've got one, let me just make sure it's a third. So there, 
and there. So there's my first third. I'll go back here. Measure yours at home if you want to. I'm just quite happy doing it like this. And actually, I'm not sure it needs to just be acetate either. Acetate does look quite clean. I think you could do this with a piece of card. So this is the shape that you're going to get. Now, what needs to happen is that second, that line needs to push out and that one needs to push out. So you've got a score line down the middle and you've got a line on either side and then this one pushes in and this one pushes in. So that's the shape we're creating, okay? Creating that, that shape. Then the way that this gets glued, that center panel there gets glued into the middle here and that piece and that piece get glued onto our um, circle. So I'm actually going to do that for you with this piece of card. And if you use red liner tape, it's really strong. So I could do that and actually share with you this. And it will work with this. It would look nicer if I did it with buff card. And I'm also going to share another tip for you. But if you do this, you've got to be properly planned miles ahead. And what you need to do is before you stick these two panels, or let me show you on this one. Uh, here we go. Before you stick these two panels, this piece slides under here. So you get that up. I think I can get it up. That bit would slide under. Let me just trim this a little bit. So I just want to show you the effect. You get the difference in the effect. So that piece would slide under there like that. That bit goes out and that bit goes down. Or the other way is it's literally stuck on the outside edge. So you can have it so that it's really neat and it's slid underneath or it's on top. The neater way is probably the preferred method and the best way to do it. Then what you need to do is on this, this bit here, no glue on this bit, the, this front bit there, you don't put any glue, but on this back bit, we do. So we're gonna just pop some glue on there. Okay, that's the first bit. Then you come into here and this gets glued in place. So this will hold the design. I'll just take that off. There, like that. Okay, then I've got to go back. So if I've already glued this underneath here, if I've already glued those bits underneath, it'll look like, it'll look like, actually, let me just think this through because I might have just told you wrong. I have told you wrong, guys. Don't glue it underneath. That isn't, that will make it harder for you to stick this next bit. Let me repair this. Ah, uh, see, this is where even somebody who's made it before makes a mistake. I thought I was being clever there by giving you a little tip, but it's not going to work. That won't work, so please don't glue it underneath. Backtrack. If, it, if we weren't live, I'd be saying to Andrew, can we stop recording? But we are and we can't, so we're just doing what we're doing. So I better be honest with you and tell you rather than have you all messaging me saying, how do I make it work? Mine doesn't look like that. Okay, so don't tuck it under. I'll do that in another class because there's, there's a step, that one more step that you need, which I haven't explained. So, so now that panel there has got the glue and it's going right across that seam, half on this side, half on that side. And I'm going to go on to this one because this one is full. And you've got to check that that seam goes in that middle crease, which mine is, so that when I open my card, it pushes my snow globe to the front. Can you see how that's working? Let me just share this with you. It also works really well if you don't have this many layers. You can do it with less layers, 
but that does look really effective. So it goes flat in the post like that, and it goes forward like that with more with the detail. So you get all of that in there. Now, just what a clever way of doing a card. And I've got to say a massive thank you to our DT because they're sometimes the ones that come up with all these amazing ideas and just give us a chance to share. But this was the one we got the most messages about and I wanted to be able to give you the chance of making using those elements. Now, all the pieces that I've got spare, my bells, etc. I could do some embellishments on the top. I could literally open up each of these pages and you could decorate them and put the detail on them and wouldn't they just look fabulous? And just to give everybody um, a quick little idea, when I take this from step one all the way to step to the end and you do all the work, the cutting, the matting, the layering, we help you with that. That's the kind of class that we're actually doing here at Academy. So if anybody is interested in finding out more about those classes, then please, please check them out. We have got some days now, a festival that are sold out, but your chance to still come and join us. Okay, I've got another project that I'd like to do for you. Um, again, there's a lot of matting and layering in this one. I'm not going to do it all. I am going to share you some of the some of the um, tips and ideas. So before I do anything, I'm just going to move some of these pieces out of the way because it's starting to look a bit messy. Um, just like everybody else's craft room, I'm guessing. But also so that you can see what I'm actually doing. Right. I'll probably find that piece of acetate in a minute, won't I? I actually just looked up and thought I saw it, but it's not. It's the one from earlier. From Right. So what I've got here is a few pieces. So we've got... Oh, and we didn't put our um, winter wishes on here. That can go over at the top like that, as you can see there or can come down at the bottom. If you're gonna put it at the bottom, you need to make sure this is high enough, or it can come up at the top there. So you've got lots of different ways and places you could put winter wishes. Right, and guess that's why, I, now you know why it reminded me of doing it, because I saw this one. Okay, so here we've got, again, the design would be layering this up just as we did do the last one. I've also got all of my panels and my animals cut out. So I'm just going to put those to one side to build the scene and all the elements. Okay, so I've just had a little message from Carol who's looking for when she can come up again. And um, I'm literally finishing the last of the writing up now and you will be able to come up and see us and um, do all of the classes so we are very very close to you being able to do that and I do hope you come into festival right I'm going to pretend the tape isn't on here because I want to speed this up for you a little bit so I'm just going to use my wet glue remember the tip of taking everything right up to the edges. And Carol, thank you so much for being so kind about the classes. I really appreciate it. It's just they're really good. Okay. So when you've got wet glue like this, you really get the chance to be able to just move it a little bit and just get it in the right place. So once you've got that ready, it's good to go. There we go. We can, we can start with this. The next thing that I've got is another panel which can go directly on top. And what we can do here, I'm just going to check my panels. What I can do here is by having this, it means that I've got a little slit here. Now, that little slit has been created using those wiggly dies. So we're talk I'm talking about these ones. And that means that I can put things in it so it looks like it's dimensional. Before I start creating all the decoration, I'm just going to put the card blank together. So I've got a main card and this one is 20 centimetres square. And you'll need two 20 centimetre square cards. Okay. 
When you, once you've got those, cut yourself an aperture in the inside of one of the cards on the front. That then is going to get some mats and layers put onto it. And we're going to do the detail like this, okay? So I'm just going to put this red mat on so that we've got it. I'm going to have to be... Actually, I'm going to have to take the tape off this one because the tape's quite close to the edge. So let's do that. So who's coming to festival? How many of you are coming? Mess message me on here. Put in chat if you come in. Be nice to hear from you. Do you know, sometimes it feels quite lonely being in this classroom talking to yourself. But I do imagine that you're all at home watching most of you are still in your gym jams because it's Monday and you can do what you like on a Monday. Right. So I know you're not really in your gym jams, but I like to imagine it. Right. So again, I'm checking. Whoops. Oh, 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 oh. Andrew's telling me that there are two ladies in the third row down that have got immaculately organised craft rooms. June and Carol. Is that true? Wow. Oh, my goodness me. Wow. <clears throat> right. I have made what's called a... No, no Andrew, it's not a boo-boo, it's a pig's ear. Right, I have made a right pig's ear of this. Luckily for me, I've got a plan. I didn't have a few minutes ago, but I have now. Right, this one does not want to sit down because it's not in the right place. So I'm going to help it. So I've just snipped it in half. I'm just going to help it by... I know, look at that. Wow. Wow. That is really bad. That was bad, bad. Right, now I know why I didn't use the bells in the last part of it. And I've got some foliage to be able to go down this side to be able to correct this. Okay. Never mind, next time Mel will be here, so you'll be okay. <laughs> right, I'm just going to do a little repair here and I'm going to show you how to do this. So you use your your um, backing tape as well. Again, just get a little tiny bit of glue. You don't want much. Right, so I'm just going to get a bit of that on there. And then I'm sliding it literally under the fibres of that bit of it. Let's get that. Right now, Andrew, I want you to just tiniest little bit there. Oh, it's got to, got to wait till it dries. Um, you won't be able to see that. It really is. It will be invisible. Right. Let me move those out of the way because I wanted, I wanted you to see what we were doing. Right. The next part of this is going to be so that we can get our frame coming through the design. So we need it to be like that. So it needs to line up there. That needs to come to here. And that bit of the frame needs to go back. So I'm just going to make sure that that all lines up like that. And it's going to just line up here before I glue anything. So I've just learned from my last episode. Yes, that's going to work. Right, first of all, I need to do some mats and layers, ladies and gentlemen. Let me talk to you about what I'm doing. So I've got, so we did two 10 by 10 frames and then the aperture inside, I'm going to give you these measurements because it will make it easier for you, is 16 centimetres square, okay? Then the frame that you're going to put over the outside edge needs to be with a small border. Make sure you line yours up properly. Mine's completely wonky all over the shop, but I'm going to put that right. So I'll show you how to put it right. Next thing you need are your next panels are 19 and a half inches. The centimetres, I beg your pardon, by nine and a half. And then these are 19 by nine. 
So they're going to go directly on top. And you're going to need a few of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So um, this one is going to sit onto here. And for speed, I am going to just glue them. Please glue yours accurately. And I'm just going to get that in place. Slide that just there. Okay, let's put these to one side as we do them. So that's one. Here's the second one. Just get that one dry. The third. I say um, a massive thank you to the lovely Vicky Deakin who did all this cutting for me. And she must be actually mortified that I'm wrecking it. So. I've got to just apologise to her. <laughs> so, Vicky, I'm so sorry. Thank you. It's, it's crazy busy here at the moment because we're getting everything ready for festival and we're all multitasking. All morning, Andrew was giving me countdowns to the class and um, Mel, of course, has gone off to do her fabulous Christmas USB tonight, which is already selling really, really quickly. And um, we're all just, yeah just super busy so this one was got the little cut in it so I've kept a gap there because that's where you can put some of your other elements so things like for instance I might want to put the the letterbox there so it looks like it's in the snow you've got all of these elements to be able to do the decoration so in fact while we're talking about that I'm just going to let that go in there so I'll pop that on there Get that lined up, get my letterbox straight in the snow. There we go, and get that all stuck. Right, so we've got two, we've got a panel that needs to go in here, but we wouldn't want that one because we don't want to hide the letterbox. So that this is the first one that's gonna go in. So pop this one in like this. Okay, I'll do a quick recap at the end. Make sure that it isn't too close to that that middle because you've got to be able to close it. Okay, so that's the thing. So a couple of millimeters away from the center and that's perfect. Okay. The next one is going to go on this panel here and it's this one. So we'll... Make sure that goes quite close to that edge, but not right up to the top. So again, on here, remember, you're going to glue yours perfectly. From start to finish, I think this card will take you about probably two hours to do all the cutting and everything else. So that's that one. Okay. I've got two more here. This one is going to go... here, like that. On this last panel is the one with my here, this one. And then you'll see where the last two are gonna go in a second. I'll just pop this on. Okay, so that's gonna go like that. So I'm making sure all those score lines and everything is flat. This piece is going to go here, okay? But I then need to put some pattern inside here. So I've got a pattern panel for this side. There. Make sure you've got them all the right way up and you're not too close to the score line. Every time that's what makes the difference. So just... Um, talking about classes and things like that as you can see I'm really quite excited about what we're doing and it is the chance for us to really share some great ideas with you right give this a moment or two for it all to get really properly stuck so it's really strong and sturdy and then this back panel is going to sit on here and we can do that now but I am going to just take the tape off this edge because I don't want it to come undone when I open it. So I'm just going to go back into here 
get this tape. If anybody loves their painting, I'm going to be painting tonight at um, half past five. Of course, you can watch it back at any time, but I am going to be painting. And this is going to go right up to that edge. So it doesn't go in. You've got to line it all up so that it all just touches the edge like that. Okay. So there, we're good to go with that bit. Now, this opens up and you can see I've got real flexibility with the design that I've got. But this panel is going to go behind and go behind. So it's going to lie on that part of the card. OK, so I'm going to lift this piece back. If anybody's got any questions and I haven't explained this very well, can you please ask, put them in the chat and I'll go over it so I can explain it again to you a different way. So that piece comes off and let's just get this piece is going to come off there. Hold those down like flat, whoops, like that. Make sure they're level along this bottom edge. And we're going to close this around it like that. And just be really gentle with it as you're laying it down. There we go. That's it. Perfect. So now I've got that is what's happening. So it's nice and strong and sturdy. And unfortunately, without that little piece in there, it wouldn't it would be even better than it is. Right. The next panel that I've got is this one and it's going to sit in the middle. So remember, we've already got some um, some color on this. We've put our background on. So this is going to sit in the middle of that white square like that. I can put this one on foam if I want to, because I've got that little cut, but I'm going to leave it as it is. But I'm going to start to build this up. So we'll put the church right in the very background. So let's do this before we assemble it. So we'll go right into the very, very background with this piece here. And that's going to sit just there up in the background. It's going to take the very top of that church off there. So that's the first part. Then I've got two of my, um, my little festival elements that you can see, my festive elements that are going to go here. And I've also got another little panel of snow, which I can put across so you can see I can be building up the snow if I choose to, to have elements there. I've got this side here where I can put a little bit of my wall if I want to. So I can tuck that in and have a little bit of wall just under the snow, just there. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to get a little bit of glue on here, just the smallest amount. And I'm going to just tuck that underneath there. So, so it's against the edge of the thing, but it makes it all start to come together. That's going to go over here. So we'll bring and put this down. So I'm just going to go there with that. And the reason I've got a gap here and I'm not worrying about it is because I'm going to put this over the top and it will just, you can see, look, it looks like the wall's just ending and that's coming into the story. But I've also, I've got other elements that I could be using. I think my, I think my, um, my snowman's a little bit too big, but I could be putting some foliage here. I could put a little bits of foliage if I wanted to on, on there, but I think I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to just make this bit dimensional. So we'll come in to add some foam on a roll for this. So we're going to start off by cutting two 20 centimeter squares. So not, not um, inches, as I said earlier, but 20 centimeter squares. And I'm just going to place that down there. Okay. Now 
you can, when you're lining this up, think about where you want to place things. If you want more of the church showing, then move the church over. So always do a dry run, what I call a dry run. So you can see what you're doing, look, have a look at it, see whether you want to make any changes to it, all that kind of thing. Um, I'm going to go into all my little bits. No, I've got, I've got a lovely one here. This one, this little boy would be perfect. Me, he's walking through there. You can see he's, he looks quite large. So I'm going to put him on some foam to give him some dimension, make him come to the, into the foreground. Um, and then you're going to cut a 19 and a half. Well, actually I'll measure, I'm going to measure again to make sure I give you exactly the right measurements. Right. So 20 inch square, first measurement. Then your aperture that you're going to cut inside is going to be, slide that under my ruler so I can see it, 16 centimetres square. Then your mats and layers inside here. The first one is going to be a 90, is going to be 18 and a half. Uh, no, it's not. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Andrew, can you type these in the chat for us? Is that doable? We're going to try. Or I'll tell you what we'll do afterwards. I'll write them on a piece of paper. We'll put them in the description of the video. That makes more sense, doesn't it? So you will get sent a link and we will then put them in the description so that you know what you're doing. That's let's make that let's make that easier for everybody because otherwise I'm probably going to tell you wrong. And Andrew will write it wrong. And neither of us can spell. So it's actually really is. It's not going to be, but it won't be good, will it? Look at the state of this table. I've just looked up and looked in the monitor. I'm in my own little world having, doing stuff. And then I'm just going to. So I've just trimmed off the bottom to make sure that this is dimensional. I'm just going to take my picture and place this on here, but I'm going to put some foam on it because we've used that little slot that we had. So let's put some foam on there. Get some dimension to this. And just going to put that. Just there. Need a little bit of foam underneath here. Just get this under here at the front end. It's because it's got tape, but no. There you go. Right, so that's my panel. Right, now then this needs to sit inside here so that it's, it's square, so it fits with a border all the way round. So that, and I'll just pop this on tape. Oh, and it's already got tape the other end, so I've obviously clearly stuck that right upside down, but we'll check. I can't tell. Ah, that's good. Right, so there and there. Right, so that's going to go in the middle of this square. Now, I have got to put right this, because this is, looks ugly and not very pleasant. So, first of all, I would use my winter wishes up in this top corner because that would that would hide a multitude of sins to start with so that would which way up that way would really could could literally hide quite a bit of it but what we would do is this so let me see how much foliage i've got i've got enough yay okay guys this is what you do this is the biggest cheat going but it works so I've got a wonky frame there and I'm really not very happy with it and, it and it's just spoiling my whole project. So I'm going to take my foliage and I'm going to create a wreath around the outside edge. So let's go that way and that way and under there. So I'm going to go, so notice I'm only sticking 
the bottoms of these down. I'm not sticking the the top part. I'm sorry, sticking the top part of it, not the whole thing. So actually, I can put you there. That. So you can already see it starting to disguise it. And then we'll put, so we'll put some berries up here and another little set of foliage here. Just gonna let that go that way. And we'll put some more berries on and our pine cones. So now you really can't see that that was wonky here. There's always a solution. It just might not be plan A. So there, put some mistletoe underneath you. Just get you up there. some more of my cones just here so I've completely hidden that joint which is great there. some more foliage use your silicon or glue gel because it'll be much better than this glue that I'm using but I'm doing this for speed so we can get uh, different effects get some of the pine some of the um, leaves to go over the pine cones as well make sure you put holly in as you go along so you've got a holly so you can finish this off as we go put little hollies in angle them Got them as different sizes. We've got different bits of mistletoe as well. So I can take them, can have a smaller piece. I'll pop that piece under there. So look at how different that looks and how it's rescued that edge. And over this side to rescue anything that we want, I could put my parcels, I could put my parcels up here or my parcels in this bottom corner. Just get my little man. And parcels in the bottom corner that could rescue it as well so what we'll do here we'll put that piece there and I'd layer those up and then I'm just going to stand this up so you can see how it would work so ready this is what would happen you stand it up it looks it comes out like that and there's the detail so we've rescued this front corner I'm just going to go back into where I've got the back of the card here. So I'm just opening it out while it all dries. So let's let you just dry there. And I've got my post box, my little girl who might be just posting something. So again, you decide what you want to do with these elements but I'm going to put the snowman in fact I'm going to put him behind her he's a big snowman and remember what you would do you would layer these up and get all of them so that they are all perfectly flat the way we were talking and I've got my little bells that could go in the top corner where are they I could put my parcels a lot all along here you could basically decorate every single panel but the principle is that when you've done that and we stand it up and that pushes in as long as you've put all those panels in flat like I did when I started you will get a card that opens and gives you that lovely finish there we go like that. Does that make sense, everybody? I hope so. Right. Okay. I think we're ju we're just checking because we've just been asked about foam on a roll. And I do. Oh, and one other thing that you can do, 
you can cut one of those panels. Oh, look at this desk. <laughs> and you can cut one of those and stick that on the inside there if you chose to. That's just another option for you. But, right, so we do have foam on a roll for you. And Andrew's going to pop that in the chat. It's called Sticks 2 Double Sided Foam Tape. And we've got 5 mil by 1.6 mil. And there's 46 meters. Oh gosh, that's quite a bit. So if you've got that, you would only need to put two thicknesses together. That would be enough. Um, okay, so this is, we're just checking because that sounds like a huge amount of, it's a massive roll. Yeah, I think it's right. Right, so that card, remember, that's how it's going to cut. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the team to take a photograph of it and we will draw the measurements on the photograph to make it easy for you to see. Hope that helps. Yeah. Right. OK. Um, well, well, I guess I need to tidy up, which will probably take me a while. I've got to be ready for half past five. Don't forget your code blue 40. Also, please like and subscribe to our social media and our YouTube channel. It's Andrew's personal project. <laughs> So he says, please tell them. And I just want to say, look at me. Look at them. I've got one arm up here. One, well, other way around. Honestly, crafters, hey? Um, it's been a huge amount of fun. I thank you so much. You know, one thing I can say is what you get is what you see. Or what you see is what you get. What's that expression? I don't know. I need to go and look it up. See you all soon. Lots of love. God bless. <laughs> If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notifications of all of our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.